welcome to the Garber's Place. It's been some time since my last video. I thought that once you understood the basics, it was enough to work through to satisfaction. What I found out was that during the process of carving, there's a lot of introspection that takes place. I realized that when the concepts become actualized, the carving takes on a different dimension. This did not occur to me actually until I had an interesting, no stimulating conversation with a complete stranger during an airport layover. The discussion challenged my thoughts on happiness. Yeah, happiness. How does that relate to carving? Well, check this out. While I'm in the process of turning a block of wood like this, I haven't started on that one, to uh, more challenging concepts. Yeah, challenging concepts. I've been working quite a while on this one. Uh, I want to discuss with you my thoughts on happiness. What is happiness? What is desire? How do you achieve happiness? Where does happiness come from? What is the relationship between desire and happiness? Where is the starting point? How does happiness feel? How does all this relate to carving? Well, let's find out. Desire is the origin of happiness. The nurturing of desire can be compared to raising a child. The nurturing, that's what I'm going to say, nurturing, not nurturing, nurturing of desire can be compared to raising a child. Small steps into the understanding of the details of our own life may lead to finding what is pleasing to the senses. Touch something that translates to a smile. Smell something that releases tension. Listen to something that calms understand what touch means, what it does to your body. Understand how that smell translates to a pleasant feeling in your body. Understand that, that special sound physically and how it translates mentally. This is not the academic or the scientific processing of sensual input. It is what does it feel like? What does it make your mind do? And what reaction does your body have? It's this kind of evaluation over and over and over again that must be used as a platform to grow happiness tools. Now, work and repetition will continue to accentuate this understanding. The work will be memorizing the outcome of this understanding. The work will be to repeat the process. The repetition process is the exercise. This exercise must be varied so that the memory is teased, challenged, and satiated. Growing happiness through the process of work and understanding of the senses 
fed by the desire to be happy is a powerful base to the maturation of a lifelong process into the pursuit of happiness. This kind of work will produce tools or triggers that can be used at will. Now let's look at some other issues, focusing on an activity. Understand the physicality of happiness. Perfection versus imperfection. Nature's relationship to happiness. Understand the element of time. Focus on an activity that combines the senses that produce comfort, pleasure, and a smile. Completely engaging in a creative process activates and energizes the senses. It has the ability to turn on switches in the mind and body that were dormant. The feeling of exhaustion is as fulfilling as the feeling of exhilaration. Perfection is not the result of this process. It is the desire for happiness that drives this process. If it is understood that imperfection is the result of the pursuit of perfection, the realization that you are the sole arbiter of your efforts and the idea of perfection is negated. Ask yourself the question, who is ultimately responsible for what I do? The only answer you could come up with is that I am. Perfection is the dragon that eats its own tail. It can consume, immobilize, and ultimately destroy. When the concept of perfection is eliminated, it will el allow the development of unlimited possibilities. It forces embracing the unknown. It builds confidence. It develops learning. The question then becomes, what does the development of unlimited possibilities embracing the unknown, building confidence, and developing the learning process have to do with happiness. They will take you to the next level of understanding happiness. They will help you engage in the pursuit of happiness. Nature has the unique lesson in the pursuit of happiness. The observation that there are no straight lines in nature is an observation that must be taken to heart. It conveys unlimited possibilities, which forces choice and the acceptance of choice and the responsibility that comes with it. What is the outcome of understanding this concept? Freedom. Yes, freedom of choice as opposed to the necessity of choice. Once accepted, the actualization of freedom of choice in the creative endeavor creates a platform for happiness. Time breeds. Yes, breeds. B-R-E-E-D-S. It is all-encompassing. 
It absorbs. It generates. It does not end. It's overwhelming if there is not enough of it. It becomes trouble if there's too much of it. And it's devastating if consumed by it. The desire to be happy must be honed, worked, and understood. This process in its totality res will resolve the issues of time. What are the barriers to happiness? Procrastination. Negative people. The if I coulda, woulda, shoulda syndrome is the essence of being stuck, immobile, intransient. It minimizes the ability to change, to see opportunity above all acts and make choices. This concept should be thrown out of the mind, thrown out of the psyche, everywhere, banished to the netherworld, put in an incinerator and burned, buried and forgotten. Negative people can consume your energy. They have the ability to alter your perceptions and question your reality. The one determining factor that will get confront negative people is the concept of I want. Yes, I want to be happy. Negative people will make this concept become ingrained in your being. They will make the work harder, but the decisions easier. Hard work is a part in the engine that grows happiness. Well, what do you think about that? That and the evolution of the creative process makes a happy carver. <laughs> Take care, guys. See you next video.